Hi, I'm Juan Lima, editor of The Economy, and this is Frontline. Today I've got here with me Detlef Spang, CEO of Cold Palace Center Services, to talk us through the markets in Europe and Asia right now. Uh, Detlef, thanks a lot for talking to me. Uh, you have one of the largest location footprints in Europe and Asia as well. What are investors looking for in the market today? In both markets, we're actually looking for growth. Hmm. So growth, not only from a revenue point of view, but also from a profit point of view. Again, you can invest a lot of money in, into this business and uh, you can gain a lot of revenues. But clearly, from our point, we're looking for both growth on profit and growth on revenues. So that's what, what, what we're after. And we're seeing a very good market in, in, in both areas. So from that point, I guess we can achieve what our investor is looking for. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then right now, you've got 29 data centers yes. spread across Europe and Asia, and you still got about an additional 500 plus uh, data center location spots around the world as well. Yeah. How would you compare the European to the Asian market in terms of trends? What is driving the business in each side of the, the world? Okay, let's let's start there. The European market is a, a bit more matured, so it's it started earlier and so on and so forth. Nevertheless, it's still a very growing market. So if you think about all what the cloud business, uh, the adoption of cloud business in generic terms, so we're expecting growth rates in Europe somehow between 10 and 15 percent, depends a bit on the country. And Asia came a bit from behind and obviously there's a lot of investment going into Asia and then you have China and India as, as two major nations. So outlook for Asia in generic terms is more in the 20 percent range from mm. a growth point of view. And that's actually what we're experiencing. Um, yeah, so it will be tier one markets first, but uh, companies are also starting now looking through countries like Malaysia or South Korea. Mm, so. okay. Towards the southwestern of Asia. Yeah, yeah. Um, okay, then, but in Europe, one of the interesting aspects of your portfolio in Europe is that you have the presence in Portugal and Spain. Yes. Uh, as you know, Iconix recently has spent 259 million to acquire IT Conic. So you're now not the only large collocation player playing in Iberia. What is the market like in Iberia for someone that has been there for a long time? Um, it, it's a very interesting market. So obviously with the Spanish economy not doing so well, let's say a couple of years ago, it was a very slow market. Mm. And this is about to change. So we're seeing by far more interest going especially into Spain. Portugal for us is very small. It's a very small economy. But from clearly from our point of view, Spain used to be, or Madrid used to be one of the tier one cities in, in Europe. It lost that status, but now it's coming back. So from that point, I think Spain will come back into, into the real market. Uh, do you think Spain is going to be part of the big four or the big five? Do you think it's going to be able to go over, say, Amsterdam? Uh, no, it can't. Uh, Amsterdam clearly is, it has one big advantage. It has less to do with the Dutch economy. It has more to do that most of the sea cables coming from the U.S. are landing in, in, in the Netherlands. And that historically has given them that huge footprint and the huge demand. So Amsterdam clearly is one of the tier one uh, cities. It's, it's leading together at the moment. This London, Frankfurt is catching up. Paris has fallen a bit behind. So if, if Madrid has to catch up, it's actually to catch up with Paris. Okay. Yeah. Um, and then one of the other big trends in the in Europe and Asia as well, especially in Europe, it's hyperscale. Yeah. So the hyperscale economy, as they call it now. Yeah. How are you using hyperscale cloud architectures to drive your business? For us, hyperscale is strategic because uh, we have today four data centers which have that capability. And clearly, if you look looking forward, a big part of our growth strategy is actually building hyperscale data centers. So we have a plan within the next five years to build approximately 10 data centers of that scale as a, with a minimum size of mm -hmm. 20 megawatt. Um, we will build some in Europe, but most of the investment will go into Asia, to be mm -hmm. very honest. Coming back to what we said earlier, Asia is uh, growing very fast, so from that there is, is a point to be made. Uh, but clearly the demand driven by cloud, take up from cloud uh, services and the cloud providers moving very fast. So this is actually what a big part of our strategy is. And that grows at least for the next five, six years, mm. will not stop. Okay, so we can expect 10 more data in the next five to six years. Yeah, from us, yeah. Okay. Uh, Another interesting aspect of this company is the fact that, yes, you are building, but you're also giving back data centers to your core business. Yeah. How is that going to come along? 
how is the cons is, can we call it a consolidation of the business? No, it's not a consolidation. Uh, coming back to a statement I made earlier, we were really mm. looking into what is our current state about. Mm. We have 29 data centers. We were very happy with most of them. Some are actually not real data centers. So there is something called Telco Node, and we have used some of those to, to okay. give some services to some of our customers but they belonging actually into the telecom space. And those are the ones we're giving back. Mm -hmm. We're talking three, they're very small today. And uh, clearly going forward, we will not offer data center services out of those places anymore. Okay, and then we spoke about Europe and Asia, but what yeah. about other continents? It's called looking for, if you've got the Iberia presence, you yeah. could easily get into north of, the north of Africa or even get to South America. Yeah. Yeah. And what about the North American market? What about those sort of markets? What are you planning? So let, let's start with North America. We took uh, a decision not to enter the US market okay. for, for two reasons. We have, in, in generic terms, we have no presence there. We have no brand recognition. It's the biggest market in the world, so very appealing. But on the other hand side, it's a very competitive market as well. So we, were, we would be very, very late in the game, and it would take a lot of effort to get into that market. Would it not be worth it to try and do it? I don't think so. So mm. we have, a, we really want to, to grow in the two markets we are interested in, where we have a, a presence today. We want to come from a point of strength and not just try to catch up with somebody. Mm. And so from that, clearly, data, data center business and building data center needs a lot of resource from a capital point of view, from a human resource point of view. So hence, we have to decide that not to go to North America uh, for the reasons mentioned. So mm -hmm. our focus is Asia, Europe. Coming to North Africa, uh, if you think our strategy is hyperscale, I don't think uh, North Africa at this moment in time will have that uh, capacity need to build mm -hmm. that. And so from that point, clearly it's mm -hmm. Europe and it's mm -hmm. Asia. But what's your view, for example, news that Microsoft wants to open two hyperscale data centers in South Africa? Because uh, the market is starting to pick up, so you yeah, think. so if there is the one exception in Africa, you know, okay. <laughs> which is South South Africa, um, we we looking into it uh, whether it's worthwhile for us to do or not. But mm. that's the only city uh, actually as an exception to what I just mm. said. Okay, and then when you look at all the consolidation that goes on in the markets yeah. and all the acquisitions and mergers and everything that's going on at the moment, because a lot of millions and billions of dollars being exchanged. Yeah. Um, do you think the data center could risk being, falling into a bubble, an economic bubble, in the next couple of years? Or do you think there's enough market out there for these many acquisitions and mergers? There, there is, first of all, there is enough market out there. Um, and as I said, the next, I can't see, I, I can't look further than five, six years, but over the next couple of years, the growth rates will be what it is today. So that's the first statement. Second statement, um, in our industry, we have many, many suppliers with very different offerings to the market. So we will see a consolidation, we're already seeing a consolidation process, but that will keep going. And especially there's two things coming together, hyperscale and edge. So naming your recent acquisition in, 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 in Spain, Equinix clearly wants to get the by far better footprint from an edge point of view. And that's the reason why they bought that company. If you think digital buying, um, telex, similar approach. So consolidation will be with us for the next couple of years, um, but the market is good. Okay. And has your mission Edge? What is called doing around Edge? Edge for us is clearly we uh, we looking into it, and we beyond looking into it, we will also focus on the Edge. Uh, data center solutions and for a very simple reason this is clearly a trend which is now on for 12 to 18 months and it's accelerating because more and more people need access to data center capability and it's also coming down to com consumer business each of us is carrying around a smartphone everybody wants to have data all the time if you think about driverless cars uh, applications from a health point of view it, it needs an access in very populated centers. You can't build hyperscale in very populated centers because there's not enough space. space. So you need an aggregation point, and that is in general in, within the city. Fortunately, we have 
a lot of our data centers um, were built uh, in, in the middle of a city. So clearly we have an advantage there, which we, we will leverage. So we have started in London, Tokyo, Madrid is the next city, Frankfurt. Clearly we will, we will go out with an edge offering to supplement our hyperscale growth part. Okay, and then in the middle of all this and going back to the M&A activity. Yes. Can we expect calls to get into large M&A in the next 12 months? I don't think so. We be always looking if we can find an asset which fits our portfolio. Obviously, we'll go after it, but large scale, clearly not. We okay. have no interest in coming more from an organic growth point of view. Okay, definitely. Thanks a lot for talking to me. Uh, don't forget you can follow Data Economy on Twitter, Facebook, and LinkedIn, and also visit the website on www.data-economy.com. 